Under training refresher course, we're covering the last portion here, completing the test. All right, so you've gotten back, you arrived in the parking lot, remember the final process for the test, got to complete the score sheet, you got to let them know how they did, and you've got to put the results in License Express website within 24 hours. At our school, we do our best to get them in within the hour, because a lot of folks are just like, yay, I took off time from work to go get this done, and they may race to the Department of Licensing License Office to get their license issued. And if you can, if by any means possible, get the score entered as soon as they are done. That's just a recommendation. Please note that you're required to have it in within 24 hours. A lot of schools do like to just wait till the end of the day and just do them all at once. I'll tell you, you can pull it up on your cell phone, License Express, and you can enter the score. It generally takes less than two minutes. And yes, it does, especially if you, uh, if you get used to doing it, it becomes a regular routine and it's just in and it's done, everyone's happy. Please note you have to have it in within at least 24 hours. Okay. Remember the applicant is not licensed to drive until the results are submitted to DOL and a license is issued. Now, sometimes what folks will ask, they'll say, hey, I've got this passing test score and uh, so I'm good to drive now, right? I'm past my test. It's like, no, you still have to go get a license. They want to check your eyes. Uh, they want to, you know, make sure you don't have other tickets or other th outstanding issues and they want to relieve you of $89 uh, to issue the license. So you do have to go to Department of Licensing or you may be able to do it online on License Express if you have a permit with your photo on it. Okay, so uh, you may need to remind people of this. They sometimes ask. They also may want to take the temporary authorization to drive. Please do not let them do this. You are not authorized to give them out. You are not authorized to give out the temporary authorization to drive to anyone. Only used for driving test purposes. And you have to keep it on file. Because when the DOL auditors come out and every year and grab a handful of your files, they're going to look for it. Where was the temporary authorization to drive? And so you have to save every one of them. And it's stapled in. you got to keep it for three years. So uh, hang on to that. Get a locking filing cabinet and uh, do that paperwork, stay out of trouble. Okay, remember the exam records are part of the official record. You have to preserve and you have to make sure they're accurate. DWELL does take this very seriously. Like They do calculate how many errors you've made. So if you are making too many of the same error and they start to see a pattern that may result in action against your license or the school's license. So please, please don't take shortcuts. Do it exactly right everyone's happy all right all right once you get to the parking lot then what first thing you do you got them parked say please turn off the car and then wait for them to turn off the car okay now once the car is off you unbuckle your seatbelt. this is for your safety it is actually part of your check ride when the uh when a master examiner or a dol auditor checks to make sure once a year that you can still do this job they're checking to make sure you do this in the correct order. So have them turn off the car. Once the car is off, take your seatbelt off. Check the errors and total the score. You have to list, write out what the disqualifying event was. Make sure you write in the time the test ended. Some people forget to do this. Now, here's the thing. Regardless of the outcome, you have to tell them how it went. Did they qualify or not qualify before you explain any of the errors? Okay, you have two phrases you're allowed to use now. It was updated in the 2021 guide, you have to either say you qualified or you disqualified. After you say those two words, you can say whatever you want. Okay, but you're required to say those two words. Not, you did not qualify, you did not pass, sorry you didn't pass, congratulations, you can't say any of that. You have to say these two phrases, then you can say whatever you want. You say you qualify, congratulations, you passed the test. Right, now you've met the requirement. All right. So explaining the results in this sheet here. So you are required to explain each error on the score sheet. I was just retraining somebody who uh, hadn't done exams for a little while and uh, they never used to explain the errors. They would just kind of give some genetic, well, you know, you want to make sure you're, you know, checking your blind spot more often in places where you're supposed to and, you know, remember, remember to, uh, you know, try to drive in a straight line and things like that. No, you have to go through and explain each error on the score sheet. So let me give you an example. On this score sheet here, you see a backing. And I like to go down from top to bottom. You can do it however you like. 
but I'll say on the backing maneuver you're required to primarily look in the direction the car is moving. Instead we spent uh, four seconds uh, looking at the back but 17 seconds looking at the mirror. Yes, I'm that weird. I'm counting seconds on it. For parallel parking a similar thing happened. You have to primarily look out the rear window in the direction the car is moving. Uh, you were mostly looking in the mirrors. So it did cost you a vision penalty here. On park and start at a hill you're required to use the parking brake anytime you're parked and especially on a hill. Uh, this is to keep in case the gear slips the car won't start rolling. The parking brake will help stop that. Lane travel. So as we drove to the side of the road for the starting maneuver, you are required to do a blind spot check to the right. And also in the neighborhood, we were weaving around some of the parked cars where you're moving from left to right uh, as you're going around parked vehicles and back over to the right. Uh, we're not permitted to do that. But hey, you still pass. And this is an example of how you're going to explain each error on the score sheet. A brief example. Uh, try to keep it positive, I would say. Remember, you're not supposed to tell them how to drive. You're really just supposed to point out the errors. And you can say, you know, couch it like, well, we're supposed to do this. Uh, you know, you did this one instead. You just have to point out the errors. We're not, this is not really a teaching opportunity. Although I've seen some examiners spend a lot more time talking about the errors than probably we're supposed to. I get it. We're not supposed to discuss errors outside of the definitions outlined in this manual, right? So we're supposed to just make them aware of areas they're supposed to improve on, right? And, and you can see a pattern here uh, on this one, say, so a big theme, I think, you know, next time, make sure you're definitely checking the blind spot and looking in the direction the car is moving, whether you're moving forward or you're moving in reverse or moving side to side, you've got to look in the direction before you put the car there. All right. Remember to keep it brief and quick, limited to the reason for the deduction. Okay, hopefully our school has some resources to say, hey, here's how to do these things that you can hand to them. Our school does, we have papers we hand out that says, hey, here's some tips for uh, how to fix some of these errors that, that you triggered today, all right? Try to keep it limited to the type of deduction you made or the reason for disqualification. Definitely list the location if they had a disqualifying event such as well, we did get to 37 miles per hour in the 30 mile per hour zone on the second road after we made that left turn at the light. So they know where it is. Plus, you've already said, uh, hey, your speed's 37 miles per hour. Uh, Got to drive a little slower, closer to the speed limit. Whatever it is you said there. But you've already mentioned that. Kind of drop that marker so they can kind of remember where it was when you're at this stage. Remember, if the applicant disqualifies, explain the reason why accident, dangerous action, too many errors, what it was right try not to use this i have failed you remember you aren't failing them you were just there to record technical errors as they occurred right you were just there to record technical errors as they occurred you didn't fail them you just observed how they went through the test marked the errors and the way the test is designed it wasn't enough for them to qualify this time for whatever reason it was Right? So if you can, try to remove yourself from this, I will judge how you drive, whether it is adequate or not. We don't do that. We don't do that. This driving test is supposed to be objective. Did this error occur? Yes, it did. Circle the error. Okay, it is not meant to be like, well, you know, you did pretty terrible. Uh, and so I just, I didn't pass you because, you know, you're, you're not checking your blind spot enough. So I just circled all of them. Definitely don't do that. I've heard of folks who said they were told that by by an examiners and it's sad I don't like to hear that it's supposed to be objective please try to keep it objective as one last story before we move on to the next slide I did have a person who uh, uh, had taken her fifth driving test uh, she nearly had two collisions on the way through the course uh, it was pretty rough she ended up with an 81 and she passed so we got to the end I said you qualified went through the errors and then at the end of it I said do you have anyone who can drive you to the Department of Licensing to get your driver license and again you know keep working on these things uh, definitely while you uh, you have a license you'll be able to practice on your own um, I'm concerned about your ability to get there safely because we almost crashed on our way to the Department of Licensing Department of Licensing about a mile from our location and we almost didn't make it there um, so I did ask if she had a ride I've never done that before only done that for one person and only said it out of a genuine concern for her safety. All right. Again, you're trying to avoid personal references, 
right? You're trying not to make it personal. In this case, even with the person I spoke with, you know, I was trying to be honest, uh, but not say, well, you're a terrible driver. I didn't phrase it that way. I tried to say, you know, I did mention we almost collided here as we turned left. Um, and I know, you know, maybe the nerves are rattled. I'm not sure. I didn't want her driving right then to the DOL. And I knew she was going to get a license and, and try to give her, you know, hey, here's the tip sheet. Here's some things to work on, uh, definitely. And uh, best of luck. Let us know if we can help you, right? So again, avoid personal references and advising exam results. You're trying not to create an argument. And exactly, put the focus on their performance as the reason for disqualification, right? You were not the great defender of how driving is should be done, okay? You were there to score this test objectively. If they want lessons and criticism, that's a separate service. They can sign up for that, okay? That's not what you're there for. All right, remember to give the applicant a full and complete copy of the score sheet. You're required to do this. You can do it electronically if you need to. Uh, you are required to give them a copy. Remember to keep the original score sheet in the school records, and we at our school use two-part form. We just tear off the back one and give them the, the copy that was made from pressing through the first one. Sometimes schools will just go in and make a photocopy. I'll tell you that costs more than the two-part forms, and it takes a lot longer. Uh, it take, takes longer than it takes to enter a score, quite frankly, to get a photocopy made on some of these printers we have. And at the end, advise the applicant of the next step. So if they qualify, tell them where they can go to get a license issued, right? Hey, your next step, go to a DOL license office. Uh, there's one here in Better Way. There's, uh, there's one in Lakewoods, one in North Bend. And you just tell them where they can go. Remember, tell them the scores are entered within 24 hours, right? Or whatever your school policy is. Uh, for us, we'll tell them as soon as I walk in here, your score is going to be entered in the license system. You'll be able to go get your license, right? Please remind them of this. Your score is valid for one year. You have to get a license issued within one year or else you'll have to take the test again. Uh, only got for a year, so you don't have forever. And I see it every month. Somebody will come back. Ah, my test expired. I didn't know I only had a year. Yeah, well, hopefully uh, your examiner will tell you. You should do this as an examiner. Tell them it's only good for a year. Go get your license. Get it today, get it next month. Don't wait too long. You'll put it off. Now, if they disqualify, just advise them. They can schedule another exam at their convenience. There's no waiting period, right? You can take a test again anytime and anywhere. There's no restrictions. Now, if your school says, well, we're not going to test anybody. We make them wait 72 hours. That's a school policy. I hope you'll be up front and say, well, we can't test you again for three days, but you can take a test again at, at your convenience, just not here. So I would advise you to be up front. That's just a good business decision. Okay. Please make sure the scores are accurately entered into License Express, your portal, within 24 hours. I'll say it again, best practice, put it in soon. If you don't have an administrator working at your school and you're required for putting in your own scores, it's really easier if you can get it in as you go, right? Uh, if you're like, nope, we're gonna do three tests an hour, it's gonna be more challenging for you to pull that off. You're gonna need an administrator. If not, you know, you'll have to get them at the end of the day. But please tell them when the score is going to go in so they don't go to the DOL and wait there for two hours thinking you're going to enter the score. And I have heard of that happening. Absolutely. All right. So remember, if you can, if you have a disqualifying score, please try to put that in right away as well. That way, if they go to another, you know, one of your locations or come back in and speak with somebody else, you don't go out on the same route. Right, and make sure you've updated the correct applicant record. Sometimes people get a little sloppy and type in the wrong number. It's hard to accidentally type in the wrong license number. Uh, they keep them not too close to each other for a reason. And uh, just make sure, check the name as you're entering the score. Check the number. All right. Hey, that's a lot. If you've been through this whole refresher course, congratulations. You made it through again. That's it. If you have any questions, by all means, reach out to us. We're at i5driving.com. Always happy to answer questions for the industry. That's what we do here. Thanks for watching.